Yo, what up, guys? This is the voice of Mr. Solution. On today's episode, we'll be looking at how to avoid being stopped out unduly from in the market. And before we proceed, please, I encourage you to kindly hit the subscribe button if you are a new if you're a new visitor to my channel, or maybe you just you've just been watching, you've watched my videos for like 10, 20 times or even more, or maybe this is your first time of coming to my channel. I encourage you to kindly hit the subscribe button and you can equally share the videos, okay? So as to encourage other persons who would want to benefit from what we are doing on this channel, okay? And then if you have any question you want to ask, if you have anything, okay, I encourage you to visit my Telegram community. The link will be, okay, at the lower section of this video. Join us there where we discuss things about cryptocurrency, okay? You can equally connect with me on any of my social media channels, my my Twitter is there, my Telegram, personal Telegram handle, and of course, I'm equally on Instagram. All this link will be at the lower section of this video. Okay, so like I said, we'll be looking at how to avoid being unduly stopped from the market. I don't know how many of us that have witnessed this, whereby you're in a trade, and let's say your, your perception was that the trade would go long, you thought the trade would go long, and then you thought the trade would go up, then you longed, and then you put your stop loss at a little at a, a little level. Then the market kept on going on, kept on going long. All of a sudden, it reverses, comes and eats up your stop loss, and then started reversing back. Okay, this thing is virtually what every trader must have experienced. This thing is virtually what everybody that has been trading the not just crypto market, cryptocurrency market, all markets. Okay, we have at one point in time experienced this, and that's what made many persons to conclude that there is stop loss hunting. Well, I do not have enough data to refute that. Reason being that this, this, is a crypto, this is a cryptocurrency market, which is totally different from other financial markets. There's no regulation here. People come to do what they want, okay? So where, while I cannot say that there is nothing like um, stop loss hunting in this cryptocurrency market, I, can't see, I can boldly say that such a thing, even if it occurs in other well-established financial markets like the forest, the stocks, and the rest of them, okay, even if it happens, it's always on the minimal side because it, there are authorities, okay, who are always checkmating this. And if you feel that you've been unduly stopped out in your trade, like if you are you haunted, okay, like your stop, your stop loss was haunted, you can take it up, just get the screenshots in your exchange compared with another platform okay you can take it up to the uh, authorities involved and then those platforms okay those platforms will go in for that they will have to pay you for that so it's stop loss on thing is a is a thing in cryptocurrency market okay but then that's not what is obtainable in well established in other well established financial market okay so now i have heard many people as well who come to say that in any trade they are, let's say they are trading because what we have here is btc where is, let's say they are trading bitcoin they they come to tell me that for every trade they are entering in bitcoin that let's say that they are they, their stop loss is just 50 dollars is 50 dollars anytime they go lower than $50. They just, anytime their trade goes lower than $50 off the, uh, the amount of money they have in that trade, they tend to exit or some, some say it's $100, you no, know, depending on the account size and the individual involved. But then I think that that thing is, there is an error there. Okay, there's an error there. Error in the sense that, okay, look at, just look at this chart now. What I have here is ATR, average true range. This measures the volatility of the very markets you're trading. Of course, what we have here is BTC USD. So what it means is that the ATR of this of this BTC USD in, in the daily time frame is not the can be the same with the ATR of maybe a coin like FTT or BNB. So each coin has it has its ATR. Each coin has its volatility, and also depending on the time frame you're using. For instance, as we have here, the ATR of this um, BTC right now, the ATR is two thousand. Look at it, two thousand. $2,446.6460. That's the ATR. So what it means is that in a day, this is how it moves. It could move up, upward this amount. It could move downward this amount. That's the current volatility for the daily time frame. Okay. The same thing also, if you equally switch to maybe a lower time frame like the four hour, you will definitely get another different ATR. So this being the case, what, how successful do you think you will be by having a stipulated um, 
value that you, you tell yourself you only lose in a trade okay so that's where i said it's very error it's 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 not okay there is an error it's prone to error when you have a fixed amount of money you can lose in a trade it's wrong so it's always good for you to follow the trend okay follow the pattern whatever market you trade in, make sure you're following the pattern every pattern you see in the market has its rules and regulation and the best thing to do would be for you to abide in, instead of having a fixed amount of money said you can only lose in that in that trade okay so now that's for the atr and then the next thing you want to look at is how do you avoid being stopped out? How can you avoid being stopped out from this market? Okay, let's look at this um, little illustration. Okay, now you have a market like this. We have, this is the supports. Okay, we have the resistance. Okay, support and resistance. And then my, the, the, you're on this trade and it's been going up. Okay, it goes up, comes there. Okay, same thing. As it comes there, touches this, this is the, this is the resistance. Okay, reverses. Okay, comes up again touches the resistance and reverses and then starts going up again okay starts going up got to this very point and then what happens next it's it did as if it wants to reverse okay did as if it wanted to reverse and what do you what do you think every person would do of course they have seen that this market wants to reverse so what they would do is that they would go short okay all this why they've been going long you know going long and it came here went long and then they've seen that this market wants to reverse Okay, so what they would do is to go, they want to go short. Okay, they just want to short the market. But then remember that you are not the only person trading this and that there are some persons, there are some big funds guy. Okay, there's those guys with big pockets who equally went long on this trade. Okay, let's say they went long at this point. Okay, let's say they went long at this point or they went long at this point or they went long at, at this point. Just know that there are people who along on this trade and then you're trying to short of course let's say you are trying to short where do you think you put you would want to put your stop loss you would want to put it here let's say you want to put it you just follow that knowing that this is resistance some persons would want to put it here okay just put your stop loss here put your stop loss here and then remember that as as it is now there are equally some other persons who would want to use a buy stop they are not comfortable going long in all these things they just want to go long when maybe the market has clearly gone above this resistance so some of them might decide may, might just have their buy stop order around this region some might just have it around there or maybe around there knowing that if market eventually goes above this resistance that definitely it, and it touches it that definitely it will start going up okay and then we have those wheels okay who have already gone gone long on this street and then they have seen this and they know that if that if they decide to go short that this thing is going to cause a big drop in the market. Uh, most of us must have witnessed it whereby maybe something, a trade, a particular trade gets to the very point. And instead of it to start maybe taking the normal journey of small, small, little, little, move, tiny moves and all that, you mainly got and then it drops. So they know that if they do this, if they if they just shut this market, that is going to lead to a massive drop and all that. It's called dumping that they, they are going to dump on the market. Okay. So what they are going to do, what they would do would be to, let me erase this so that it doesn't confuse us. Okay. So what they would do. Let me have this as well. Okay. So what they would be would be to just, they would just try as much as possible to push this market. They will push it push it keep pushing it and eventually it gets to this very level when it gets to this very very level remember that these people that went these people that went short here they have a buy they have their stop loss here okay so buy stop in stop loss in the sense that they want to do the opposite of what they did here knowing that they have their stop loss and also there is equally another buy stop here so these guys we try as much as possible these wheels we try as much as possible to push this price up to this level so when they push it to up to up to this level they will not have enough liquidity this thing is called liquidity they have enough supply of liquidity that will help them to dump so they will dump on these guys that have that have their stop loss here and equally maybe even push it up to this very level to eat up this this um, buy stop of other persons those people who have their buy stop here and then once this thing happens and then there is not enough enough buy again 
to push the market upwards what happens next is that the market will, will keep dropping i know this is a bit technical but if you if you just follow me gradually you will understand what i'm saying okay market got up to this very level and then some persons you see it, it, it did as if it's it wanted to drop some persons decide to short and then as i decided to short at this point they have their stop loss around this point they have a stop loss here stop loss here stop loss here and as they have their stop loss remember that stop loss means opposite of what they are what they did here here they sold so the stop loss here means they would want to buy and then as they have their stop loss here they are equally other guys who have their buy stop a little bit above the resistance level okay so because yes for every buy there is a corresponding sell or in other words for every sell there's a corresponding buy this thing helps to you know make it make the market to be in equilibrium that's why sometimes when you look at a trade they will tell you that this trade doesn't have um, liquidity okay it doesn't have liquidity in the sense that maybe the number of persons who want to sell is not corresponding to the number of persons who want to buy Okay, so for a market to be volatile and to be to have enough liquidity, buyers should be in alliance with sellers. So this thing will make this thing will make for equilibrium. Okay, but then we have we normally have enough a sharp drop when the number of buyers do, does not correspond to the number of sellers. Okay, so that's why sometimes we have a sharp drop in the market. It happens when the number of of of, of buyers do not correspond to the number of um, the number of buyers does not correspond to the number of sellers. So it, it leads to the rapid drop in the market. Okay, so we have something like this already. Then these guys have their stop loss here. Then we have the buy stop order. So the wheels, they just try as much as possible to push this market here. Remember the, the long day, the long day. So they are selling profit. They are selling profit. And you, the tiny you, you are going, you are going short here. And the, the of course, these guys have been long here. These guys have more money than these are institutional traders and big funds guys and all that okay so they don't want to they, they don't just want to take the tiny problem they still want to, they, they would want to take up this little um they know that if they could push this market up they will benefit more okay so they just push the market here then sell 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 they long tail so they'll just they will sell to those guys who have their buys their stop loss here equally sell to these guys who have their uh, uh, their buy stop then what happens next that there is no enough and buying pressure to push the market up the market will start going down so this is actually what normally happens this is just the typical action of the market this is typical price action of the market this is how it normally happens okay so the question now arises how do you make sure that you don't get unduly stopped out in the market but before we, we before we go into that let's just look at a typical example of what i just um talked about Let's look at a typical example of that. We are using um, this is Bitcoin. We are using BTC charts for that. BTC USD, okay. And we have identified. We have succeeded in identifying our support and our resistance. Okay, we've identified support and resistance at this point. This is our stop support and resistance. We've identified our support and resistance, and we are trying to use for our. This is for our charts, okay? So this is our support and resistance. Look at what I mean here. This is what I mean, okay? You see that this trade has been going up, okay? Going up, and then let's say some persons shorted, and um, job, this is just a, a hypothetical example, okay? There is no, there is no evidence to that, okay? So then this market got up to this very point, and people thought that maybe the, the thing wouldn't go that far, okay? So they decide to short. And they decided to short of course as they shorted they might some of them would put their stop loss just immediately immediately at that um area of value aov that's around that resistance some of them would put it here and then as they put it here they will also have there will equally be some other persons who have their buy stop just a little bit above this resistance so somewhere around there and these wheels that we are talking about they just come just try as much as possible look at how it happened there just tried as much as possible to push this price remember you had already shorted let's say you shorted at this point let me mark it well let me mark it uh, with a horizontal ray. okay you shorted at this point this, this was where you shorted you shorted there and then let me change the color to yellow okay you shorted there and then you put your stop loss just at that area of value at this resistance and then as you have your as you have your 
stop loss here, there are equally some other persons who have their buy stop just a little bit above this a little bit above the resistance. So these guys, they just try as much as possible to push it up here. As they push, remember you shorted there, okay? And then as they pushed it up here, what, did, what happens next? They ate this one up, even went and ate those guys that have their buy stop order. What happens then the market actually reversed and started going down, okay? Remember you, you, you shorted, but then it ate up your stop loss, ate up the buy stop of these guys who have their buys here and the market started reversing. This thing is usually very painful usually very painful so the question and now, now arises how do you ensure that this thing doesn't happen to you how do you ensure that even if you're placing your stop loss you're placing it at a point where you are leaving your you, you're giving your trade enough room to breathe i call i call it enough room to breathe because this is a very volatile market so you need to give the market enough space for it to get itself enough space for it to do what it wants to do especially this cryptocurrency market that has a very high volatility that can move you know, erratically the way it wants at any point in time. So you need to factor this in. So that being the case, what would you do? What should you do? How should you do this? This brings us to the ATR we talked about, average true range, average true range. Remember in the beginning, we said that whenever you're trading, you need to consider two things. Whenever you're trading and you're trying to place your stop loss, you need to consider two things. Firstly, you need to consider the time frame you're using and secondly you need to consider the volatility of the market you're trading okay all coins don't have the same volatility there are some that don't just don't move much in a day there are equally some that move very much in a day so you need to capture this thing you need to understand it so that it will help you to know how to pro properly place your stop loss okay so that brings us to the atr we talked about average two range so let's say I was taking this trade now, this, this ATR, and then I've seen that the ATR here, the value of this ATR is around um, 1,000. Let me just, okay, hypothetically, let me just say, okay, at this point, it was, a, let's just say at this point, the, the value was 1,181. Please follow this, follow my mouse. This is my mouse here, follow it. The value here was what, 1,002. Okay, let's just make it 1,200. And then I am here, I am on this trade. And then I met this trade at this point. Let me bring it closer so it doesn't confuse us. Let me bring it closer so it doesn't confuse us. Remember, I shorted there. Remember, I shorted there. Okay. I shorted there. And then I shorted there. And then the, this, this, this was where I shorted. I saw this red candle and I thought that this market would start reversing. I shorted there. And where did I go to put my stop loss? I put it, let's say I had my stop loss at 51459, which I told us that it's wrong. It's wrong for you to put your stop loss at an area of value. A -UV, you don't put your stop loss at an AUV. So what should be the ideal thing would do? You've already know that the stop loss here is what five, the value of this um, resistance is 51459, 51,459, okay? And then, Knowing that, you need to factor in that ATR we talked about. That ATR value we got was what? 1,200. So for you to know the right place to put your stop loss, add, add 1,200 to 51,459. If you eventually do that, you will see that you this market definitely will go up above, okay? Okay, depending, you know, what we are, what we are just giving is a hypothetical example, okay? And okay, let's say this the stop loss was a bit higher. Let's just put okay, let's just say the the area, the area of value, the stop loss was here. Yeah. When I did when I did this, what I used was one hour. It was not for it was not for our candle that I used. It was not for our time frame. I used one hour. Okay, let's say we had this our um, our area of value here. That's the resistance was at 52,071 as at when we entered that trade, okay? And then we, we decided to go short here. Maybe we went short so soon, okay? And then our AOV is here, our resistance is here. The typical thing everybody would do, every uh, novice traders, most people would do, would be to put the stop loss just in directly at that um, um, resistance zone. That's what most of them would do. Okay, but then, like I said, it is very wrong. So the best thing to do would be to check the equivalence of that um, of that resistance. Like here, we say it's fifty two thousand and seventy one. Now add up add up the ATR at that, as at that point. Let's say 
we are having, let's just say, call it $1,250. Then add $1,250 to $52,071. You know, just do the arithmetic and you see what, that the value it will give you, we definitely, okay, $52,071 by $1,500 and something should be giving you $53,000 plus, or there are $53,000 and there are about. So, what, in that case, your stop loss should be, will be somewhere around here. And not here that you ordinarily would have put it. So that's this is what I mean by giving your trade enough room to breathe. This is what I mean by giving your trade enough room to breathe. Okay, so you put the stop loss around this. So that even if the market eventually comes here, you know, does what it, whatever it does, and you couldn't get here, the next thing is that happens is that market will start going down, and then eventually, you know, you'll be you'll be in profit. Okay, you'll be in profit. This is different from what would have happened if you had it just put your stop loss at that area of value. I call it area of value. Support and resistance are area of values in a trade. And you need to be very careful and very mindful of what you're doing. Remember, like I said, this thing is depends on the time frame you're trading. It depends on the time frame you're trading. It also depends on the volatility of that very coin you are trading. Okay, then let, let's just look at another, another example of what we just talked about. Let's say, okay, let's use another time frame of same BTC. We are still using the same BTC. Okay, we are still using the same BTC and we want to use another time frame. Let's try and use uh, maybe um, one hour. Let's try and use one hour. You see that the ATR value will definitely change. We are trying to use one hour and using one hour, we wouldn't have, we wouldn't have the same support and resistance. They will have their, it will have its different support and resistance. So we're, we're not going to work with this current support and resistance. We might just have to, you know, draw up another one and all that. Let me remove this ATR so it doesn't confuse us. Okay. So we have these here. Okay, this is the this is the one hour chart of BTC. Okay, let's say we have our we have this support and resistance. We have a support here. And then which other one? Which other one is obvious to us? Which other one is obvious to us? And we have this one here. We have this. We have this here. Okay, and we'll probably have another one here. I don't want to draw, I don't want to draw many things so that it doesn't confuse us, but just get the scope. If you understand the scope, it will be very easy for you to know how to place your stop loss at any trade you are undertaking. Okay, to help you to know the right place to place to put your stop loss. So let's just focus on what is happening here. Okay, let's just focus on this. You see the same thing we were talking about, right? People going short and going long and the market eating up. Look at it. Uh, look at just uh, this is just a typical example of the very thing we just talked about. Okay, people, you know these points. People, of course, many people would have gone short here, yeah? and then the market went up and then reverses and and all that. So always consider the ATR and avoid putting your stop loss at an area of value. Avoid putting your stop loss at an area of value. If you are going long. If you are going long, let's say at this point, okay, let's just put it, put, put this one here. Okay, we have this here. And you've seen that the, this market has come to the support. Okay, it has come to the support. And let's say you didn't meet it immediately. You hit the support. Assuming you met it somewhere around, okay, let's say you met the market when it was here. Let me bring this so it doesn't confuse you. Okay, my, you met the market when it was just here. Okay, and then you look, you've looked at this and you've seen that this market is going up. You decided to go long. Okay, some persons would just want to put their stop loss just here, you know, just immediately at that area over. They want to put their stop loss immediately at that area over. Like we said, it is very wrong. You don't do that. Rather, pull up your ATR, go to your indicators, go to your indicators, go to your indicator, pull off your ATR, average true range. Remember, you're going long. So consider the value of that ATR as at that point in time. Okay, this is the trade we were talking about. As at that point in time, at this point, it was it was 500 and something or thereabout. Yeah, 500, let's say, let's just call it $500. That's the value as at that point in time. Then what you would do would be to add 500 to this area of value. Add 500 to 45633. That should be giving you um 45,000 that should be giving you 46,100 and something dollars so your stop loss doesn't need to be here right i just give you it should be somewhere around this it was just 45,600 and something it should be somewhere around here 
please, you are going here, you are going long. So what would be, what you do would be to deduct it. So you're deducting 500 from 45,633. So what you should be having is 45,100. Let me just put it that way, 45,000. 100 45,133 because you're deducting $500 from it. So your stop loss should be 45,100, something around around this price. Okay, 45,100, just somewhere around there. Okay, 45,100, just somewhere around there. And then 45,100 should be somewhere around here. Okay, There's, this is the ideal place for you to put your stop loss. Let me shade it with red so you have 45,000 45,100 and something okay that's the ideal place so that the market eventually comes here okay it doesn't you doesn't have to go down okay but then in a situation whereby you put the stop loss and the market comes and eats it what it means is that that your stop loss is there, like their trade is wrong so what it does is, is that it takes you out of the market so does this just one of the things that having a well regulated Okay, a well calculated stop loss helps you in a trade, it helps you to avoid being unduly stopped at. Okay, as you can see, you were long, and then they, let's just keep following the market, keep kept on going, kept on going, kept on going. See, he came here, he touched that, um, he touched that support, but then it didn't, it didn't go lower. And the market kept on going up again, still going in your favor. So this would have been totally different if you had placed, as you mean, had placed your stop loss just at this point, at this 45,733. Immediately it came down here, it would have eaten it up and then just take you out of the market and then start going up again. So this is one of the ways or the, one of the strategies I normally use whenever I am trading. I normally include the ATR, calculate it very well. And then another point you need to consider is that if you are using a large, if your position, if you're using a large position size, you it's okay for you to have the, for your stop loss to be bigger. Okay, so what do I mean by that? Assuming like like what I'm my position size here is not, I'm just using a little amount of um, my position size here is small. I could decide to make my stop loss to be two eighty R. You know, hypothetically, we calculated that the ATR here was 500. So I could decide to make it 500 plus 500. That's 1,000. So I'll be deducting 1,000 from 45,633. Then I'll be left with 44,600 plus. Do you understand? So it depends on your position size. So in other words, the higher your position size, the smaller your stop loss should be. But then the smaller your position size, the higher is okay for you to have your stop loss. That's why your stop loss higher. So that's why sometimes when you look at maybe you, you give you look at a trade or you look at some person's signal and all that, they will. If you look at the uh, the uh, risk to reward ratio, the ROR, you see that the risk is higher than the reward. Yeah, those those things are okay. Whenever you see that an, a, the the ROR. The risk, to, the, the risk is higher than the reward. What it means is that you should be very careful. You don't have to go big on your position size. Instead, reduce your position size so that it will be it will be in it will be in tandem. Okay, it will be in the same value as so that even if you get to lose, you don't lose much. So whenever you see a, a, a risk to reward that is very big, maybe the risk is higher than the reward. What it means is that you should be you should be mindful of your position size. If, before you would have gone into that trade with. Fifty dollars because we you have a higher risk to reward. Go, just you should you could just go enter that trade with half of what you would have entered there, or even quarter of what you would have entered there. You would have entered it with hundred dollars, but then you have seen that the risk is higher than the reward. What you would do would be to reduce it instead of going in with hundred dollars, you could go in with twenty five dollars. Why the person did that was because maybe he decided the person decided to use to. ATR for his or her stop loss. You don't have having 45,000, you could have something bigger. Okay, we could have something way bigger. Instead of having, yeah, 45,000, we could have maybe something, maybe the 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 risk, the, the our stop loss, instead of it being here, it could just come down more, it could just come down lower. Okay, so that's just the thing I want us to um be well cleared on, especially when it comes to how to place stop loss. And then I have heard many persons, I've equally listened to many persons, I've equally read many traders say that they don't use stop loss. But then I, I, you can never say you don't use stop loss when you are trading a, vol a very volatile market like the cryptocurrency market, especially those of us who are trading futures. You can never make do with that. Like, there is no how you can succeed there if you don't use stop loss. Yeah, it can work in other, other financial market like the options and all that, but not when you are trading futures. 
Okay, some person will say you just need to be very, very sure that your that what you that your the, what you saw in the market is right. That you what you saw clearly. That you are very convinced on what you saw. There is only places stop loss. But then that can only work in other markets. It can even work in sports markets, but not in cryptocurrency market. Let me let's look at a, a very good example of that. Let's switch this thing to a um, daily time frame and look at it in the um in a broader view so that you see why it's not always good not to use your stop loss why it's not always good not to use your stop loss okay so i'm gonna widen this and remove this atr we are done with it okay i'm gonna expand this and we are using the daily chart this is the daily chart of btc btc us it this is the daily chart okay we just want to look at why it's not always good to listen to people who say they don't enter any they don't use stop loss for their trade they don't use stop loss for their trades okay so let's say hodo some persons entered there yeah hodo hodo h o d a hold on to their life and then yeah it's normal you you can you, you can lose you can lose if you don't sell something like that then yeah the market kept on going up kept on going up it got to this very point kept on going up and then they had this this drawdown here other persons went long and you know they kept on moving with that cycle kept on going and now look at what happened just look at what happened some persons definitely bought here they will tell you that anybody is, is only paper hands that you it, where that is is, is is only fools that sell yeah some persons see, say that that is only fools that sell then they bought here they didn't sell kept went to this point came down here they didn't sell came down here they didn't sell now, now just look at what has been happening so far. I see that the market has actually been going down, has been going down from that time, okay, up onto this very point where it came to this very high, and then they didn't sell, they are still holding. Now, calculate from that moment up to this very point in time, see how the market has been going down, and see how much the person that bought at this very point, or maybe the people that bought at this swing low, Okay, at this swing low, how much they have lost so far. So that's why it's always good for you to use your stop loss. But now, in a situation whereby maybe they bought at this very point and then decided to put their stop loss here and then the market takes them out, see how much money they would have saved themselves. Okay, so that's why it's always good for you to use your stop loss, especially for futures trader. For the sport, it's fine. Okay, you can, you can, you can stand the test of time, you can bear it and all that, but you know, for futures traders, a time comes when you get liquidated. So if you know that, you you stand the risk of getting liquidated it's always good for you to use your stop loss okay so that so that's all for that on today's video i hope you've enjoyed it and if you like my content kindly share it to your community kindly like okay you have any question you want to ask you can always link up with me so that we get clarified on that till i come your way again i remain your man mr x to the o to the l to the u to the sean mr so sean